Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Mellow Marv podcast. I think that's what I'm going to call it, Mellow Marv, because during these podcasts, I'm going to be really kind of just explaining how I feel about whatever topic I'm discussing with you guys. Um, And if a lot of you guys know me, I'm very 110% full go all the time, so it's nice to kind of sit down, relax, um, see another side of Marv here, and... uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think these are going to be really long. I want these to be short. I mean, if I have a guest on or something, maybe a little bit longer. But it's just me. I'm not bouncing ideas off of anybody. I'm not talking to anybody. So quick little five-minute, you know, podcast, you know, drop what the topic is, explain how I feel about the topic, maybe throw a quote in there, kind of elaborate on the quote, and then hopefully leave you guys feeling inspired and motivated to go and use whatever I said to make your lives better or whatever you're doing better or perfect your craft and um, whatever you're working towards. So again, with a lot of the things I do, I don't want this to be like super formal. I want it to be low key. I want, I want, I want you to just really understand what I'm saying and kind of dial in. Um, so what the, what the topic for today is finding yourself when you can't be found which is like a lot, like it's what, three, four, five, six, seven words, but it's like so much, like finding yourself when you can't be found is, it's such a low place. You don't, you don't know where you're at, you're lost. Um, You're trying to find yourself again. And I think it ties into what you're doing. Like you start to lose focus, you start to lose um, traction, you start to lose that gratitude of what you're doing like you don't want to do it you, you're trying to figure out why do I need to do it what's the purpose behind it um, what's the goal what am I getting out of this you know you lose all of that so this is the quote that I wanted to follow up with with it um, and it says to work on yourself is the best thing you can do except that you are not perfect but you are enough and then start working on everything that destroys you. Your insecurities, your ego, your dark thoughts. You will see, in the end, you're going to make peace with yourself. And that's the greatest thing in the world. Ball drop. So today on this podcast, um, Mellow Marv, I want to break down this quote um, and really dissect it with you guys. I don't know, I kind of, for me personally, a lot of times I like to just write things down on paper. I have a journal, I have a million notebooks. Um, But maybe take out a piece of pen, piece of piece of pen. (laughs) Take out a piece of paper, uh, grab a pen. Maybe if you have another device, type on your notes, maybe swipe in and out of this video and take notes. Um, But for this first thing, I'd like you to write down to work on yourself is the best thing you can do. So, why, why am I writing this down? Why, like, obviously I know that I'm the, but a lot of people don't know that, but obviously I know that I'm the most important thing. You know, like, why am I writing this? What's the point of writing this? But please write down to work on yourself is the best thing you can do. Cause you have to know that you have to know in yourself, in your mind, that it is important to work on yourself and to put yourself before others. Sometimes you can't, you can't always put other people first. I mean, you'll get lost. You'll get lost in the sauce. You can't, you gotta put yourself first sometimes. You gotta put your mental health first sometimes. You have to put your physical body first sometimes. So writing down to work on yourself is the best thing you can do is your stepping stone on finding yourself. Why is that? Because writing something down and reading it to yourself, it'll come to the forefront. It'll remind you that, oh wow. Oh wow. Oh wow. I am important. I am what I need to be working on. And it's okay to work on yourself. It's not wrong or weird or selfish. Work on yourself. Put yourself first. Let the people around you know, like, yo, I'm, I'm working on myself right now. Like, I'm trying to, I'm here and I want to be here. Don't take it as selfish. Don't take it as, don't take it as I don't want to be around you. But right now I got to work on me. I got to work on my morals, my goals, and what I'm working towards. So write that first sentence down. Work on yourself is the best thing you can do because it is. Without yourself, how can you help out your partner, your friend, your relatives? How can you do any of those things if you can't, you know, if, if, you're, not, if you're not here, if you're not present in your, own, in your own well-being, you know? 
The next sentence says, except that you are not perfect, but you are enough. Nobody's perfect. I mean, we've all heard that since when. Jeez, my, sorry, my chair is making like every noise in the book right now. Um, we've all heard that. Except that you are not perfect, but you are enough. Hmm. Practice makes perfect, you know, in your sports. Coaches, you heard that one. But accept that you are not perfect, but you are enough. Accept that what you're doing isn't going to be perfect, but you're working as hard as you can to get it there. Accept that what you're doing in life may not be perfect, but you're doing everything that you can to make that next step, to make that effort, to reach that goal, you know. And that's a hard thing to face. Like, I'm doing all of this work and it's not going to be perfect. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean that it's not going to be perfect? It has to be perfect. I want it to be perfect. I'm working so hard so that it is perfect. But it's definitely something that, you know, I struggle with. You know, I want everything to be perfect when I do stuff, fundraisers, events, my store, uh, my landscaping, when I go to somebody's house to cut the yard, I want it to be perfect, you know? That's what I'm striving towards. So instead of, I can't do this because it's not going to be perfect, what about, um, I'm going to do everything in my power to get it to be perfect, to get it as close as I can to be perfect. Because there's a million ways to do everything. But how, in your way, in the way that you like to do things, can it be perfect? And sometimes it might just turn out awful, but it's still good. You know, it's enough. It's enough. And that's what the back end of that sentence says is, but you are enough or, but it is enough. But what you're doing is enough. Um, and sometimes you might not always have that push, that go, that drive um, for it to be um, perfect, but it's enough. So the, set, the second sentence here that I wanted you to write down was, accept that you are enough, but you... No, <laughs> sorry. Accept that you are not perfect, but you are enough. And I really just, it's fitting, you know? Accept it. Genuinely accept it and, and strive towards it. Strive for the perfectness, but know that what you're doing is enough if it doesn't always turn out how you want it to be. And sometimes what you're doing isn't enough. You think it is, but you're really not putting the hours in. You're not putting the work in. You want the results that you see on social media, but you're just doing this. You want, you know, you want that new car, you want, you know, you want to have these sponsor deals that everybody else is posting, but you're not grinding. You're not working on yourself enough to reach those things. You're just seeing it and wanting it. Instead of seeing it, processing it, working on it, and then achieving it. The third sentence here says, and then start working on everything that destroys you. That's, an, that's really hard. Work on the things that make you upset. <laughs> Work on the things that completely kill your vibe. Work on the things that completely kill you inside. Work on the things that bother you. Work on the things that annoy you. Like, that's not easy. That's not easy. But here it says, and I write this down and highlight it. And then start working on, the, working on everything that destroys you. But it's almost like, you know, facing things. You got yourself. You got what you're dealing with, what you're going through. And you got to face it. Face it head on. Maybe step at a time. It's not, again, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be, I'm going to face, you know, this, this, and this today. Maybe it's one thing. Maybe it's half of that one thing that you're going to try to face. But they say, you know, 1% a day. Try to make yourself better by 1% a day. And I really like that sentence, honestly. Um, and then start working on everything that destroys you. Day by day, step by step. Maybe it's social media for me. Social media for me destroys me. 
because I have to use social media in order to grow my business and in order to, you know, promote whatever I'm trying to do. But then I kind of get caught up in just scrolling, comparing, you know, and I think we all do that, but it's something that I kind of struggle with, you know. So how can you kind of put that down? You know, okay, I'm done working. I'm done posting what I need to post. Let me get off of my phone. Let me get off of social media. You know, let me, um, let me not go out with them tonight. Let me not hang around them because they make me feel insecure. They make me feel unwanted. They make me feel um, below them, belittled. Um, let me not, you know, and I'm just speaking in general right now, like, let me not do this because it makes me feel like this. Let me not go there because then I know what I'll do there. You know what I mean? It's almost like visualizing the situation before you even get there. Thinking ahead, planning ahead, right place at the wrong time. Right place at the wrong time. So you can be at the right place, but maybe at the wrong time. You could be, you know, where you want to be, where is your comfort place, but it could be the wrong time. Um, it could be the wrong group of people. It could be the wrong, um, the wrong things that you're doing at wherever you're at, you know? I, uh, I might have said that quote wrong. I definitely did, but I think however you put that quote, however you want to say it, um, timing and place line up. You see it all the time. Maybe, you know, you were somewhere and then later in the day, for instance, where, where were Aaron and I at? Florida. No, I think Florida, but we were somewhere. And when we got back to the room, no, I think it might have been Columbus. When we got back to the room, we turned on the news and saw that there was people were getting stabbed or somebody got shot literally a block down from where we were at. And that's scary to think about, you know, like that is so real. Right place at the wrong time, wrong place at the right time, wrong place at the wrong time, however you want to put it. But I'm kind of straying away from the sentence, but and then start working on everything that destroys you. So definitely take note on that. Write that down. Um, face what you can and face it well. Face it in the right mindset. Don't, don't face what you're going through while smoking. Don't face what you're going through while drinking, um, while you're what, whatever. Be in a clear mindset. Be, be um, maybe right when you wake up. Right when you wake up, maybe have a list of all the things that are destroying you right now and try to check them off. Face them. Talk to that person. Talk to that boss. Talk to yourself. Maybe it's right up here, you know. But the next sentence says, your insecurities, your ego, your dark thoughts. Which ties into the previous sentence. Those are the things that normally destroy you, your ego how great you think you are, your dark thoughts, those things that really hold you back from really being who you can be, and um, your insecurities, what bothers you about yourself. Maybe it's your eyes, your mouth, your nose, your hair, your arms, your fat, your skinny, um, your shoe size, your smile, your ears. I don't know what it is. But it almost goes back to being comfortable with yourself, accepting that everything isn't going to be perfect, but you are enough. It's enough. And, um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have much to say on that sentence because it really ties in with the last one. But you can almost write that as a whole, you know, and then start working on everything that destroys you, your insecurities, your ego and your dark thoughts. And there's more things that destroy you besides those things your friends, your associates, um, the people you work with. Um, all those people can destroy you as well, quick, just like that. Next sentence says, you will see in the end you're going to make peace with yourself. And that's, what, uh, that's all it is, is making peace with yourself. So then when those things do come around, when those people do try to, like, none of this stuff is going to stop it. Like, okay, you know, you figured out all your insecurities and your dark thoughts, you faced it all. 
that's not going to be the last time it happens. So it's fine. like it's coming to peace with those things. You're not trying to you're trying to get rid of some of these things. Some of these things you can get rid of that will positively affect your life 100%. 100%. But some of these things are always going to be there. This this is always going to be here, you know? So it's finding peace in it. Um, some of those family members are always going to be there. Maybe not always going to be there, but they're going to be there. Or that person at your job while you're working there, they're, they're going to be there. It's not, okay, I wished them away in my head. Like, <laughs> they're not going to be there tomorrow when I go into work, you know? Or you, it's finding peace in it and building enough, I don't know what the word is, but building yourself up enough to the point where you're above it. You're not worried about it. It's like, oh, cool. Nice. Dope. Cool. I don't know why you said that, but have a nice day. You know? And you're past it, opposed to completely losing yourself because so-and-so said this, this, and that. You know what I mean? So then the next part goes to say, and that's the greatest thing in the world. What's the greatest thing in the world? That's, that's the question that I'm leaving you with today. And that's the greatest thing in the world. So what's the greatest thing in the world to you? Is it impressing this person, that person, this person, making sure this person, that person, this person is great? Or is it um, finding yourself, finding peace within yourself? I hope that this podcast today was beneficial. I hope that it opened your eyes or your mindset to different things, a different way to look at things. Um, if you have any comments, please drop them down below, um, positive or negative. I'd love to receive some feedback on these. Um, I enjoyed breaking it down, um, even though I kind of strayed away. A little bit on one of the questions I think sometimes it's good to stray away in um, in thought um, I would say bring a bring a piece of paper and pen to the next podcast you know um, I really find that writing things down is really beneficial for me maybe it's not for you maybe you writing things down isn't good for you but for me writing it down seeing it on paper jotting little notes um, it's beneficial and um, Again, let's recap what the topic was today. Finding yourself when you can't be found. And again, my, my goal in this podcast wasn't to find you. You know, you didn't click on this. I mean, you clicked on this video to better find yourself, you know, to help yourself find yourself. But this isn't the key. This isn't, uh, okay, video's over, I'm found. But I hope that I gave you some points that you can work on, um, some points that you can base yourself on, um, it's almost like a little measuring scale, you know, um, but thank you guys for tuning in, uh, to Mellow Marv, and I hope you guys have a blessed rest of your evening. Thanks for watching.